Hey, hey everyone, time to stop and pray for your husband for a couple minutes as a intentional time of valuing, pursuing, and investing in your marriage. So if you've never been on any of my videos before, my name is Julie and just a little bit about me. I am a Christian first and foremost, so that's the most important thing you're gonna wanna know about me. I am a wife. I've been married to my husband for 10 whole years. We met and started dating um, after my first year of college. So we've been together for 13 years and been married for 10 years this past June. And we do have one little guy. We have a two-year-old who is cray to the cray. Ooh, he is crazy, but he's also crazy awesome. So um, I am a working mama. I have um, an incredible, um, cool job where I get to literally sit on my couch, but um, today I got to actually meet with my coworkers, so I have a real outfit on in case anyone who has been watching for um, any length of time, you're always like, why is she dressed? Why is she not wearing leggings? Because generally I'm wearing leggings or workout clothes because I get to work from home, but um, I did get to work with my fellow teammates today. If you are um, looking for, I don't know, any sort of um, practical life advice from one woman to another, I highly encourage you to check out the website I work for. It's thegritandgraceproject.org. If someone wants to type that into the comments so people can see it, I really recommend it. Um, just today we're um, thinking about the relaunch of our website. We're almost a year old and so we're thinking about and changing a bunch of stuff, revamping the whole thing. Um, and so we're getting ready for all of that, which is exciting and stressful. <laughs> um, but even just any time I spend any time on the website, I'm always like, ah, there's so much good stuff here and it's still new so people don't know about it. So if you're a lady, I encourage you to check it out. That's my day job, but I'm also really into fashion and fitness. So that's a little bit about me. But my main passion is to just have some real talk with other women when it comes to this thing I've called wifing because the Bible says if you're a married woman that the number one priority you should have obviously after your own relationship with God is your relationship with your husband. However, the culture, the culture and um, the, um, the motherly instinct you may have if you're also a mom the culture and the motherly instinct definitely like fight and claw to keep that priority at, in the wrong order. So, um, hey Jessica, I see your comment about the emojis. Um, love it. So, um, I'm here to just kind of be someone who's speaking against that um, cultural shift toward eh, your marriage isn't that important or eh, if your marriage isn't really fulfilling you, cut and run, go find somebody better um, or just the general kind of apathetic cultural attitude toward marriage. So um, I have been doing this series now for well over a year and so I'm always looking for fun ways to keep it interesting. And so right now we're doing something kind of silly but something I'm totes like into. Um, I mentioned I was a little bit diva. Um, I love the emojis and so we've been using the emojis to influence and be our inspiration for what we'll pray for. So today we're using another one of the top emojis in my life, which is all the praise hands. So if you use all the praise hands, that's what I call it as though that's the name of it. If you use the praise hands emoji, um, show me a little love and comment right now with that emoji. Um, if I were to probably list out my top 10 emojis, it's probably in there. You know how on your um, keyboard it shows you your most recent emojis? It's a, it's a weird day if I have to go searching for where that one is actually found because it's not in my recents because I use it a lot. But when I think of the all the praise hands emoji, as I've called it, um, I think of worship. That's what I think of. So we're going to use that as the, um, you know, kind of the lens by which we think about and pray for our husbands today. Now, as I picked that emoji, um, full disclosure, I'm literally just working my way through the emoji keyboard from left to right. So otherwise I would get lost and confused and skip some, and that would just be tragic. Um, that would be, um, crying sad face. Um, I see your emojis by the way, keep them coming. Um, yep. Praise hands. That's the one we're using today. So when I think of that, I think of worship and in the year plus 
that I have been doing this daily you know, vlog, for lack of a better word, I have so many women who have said, um, hey, let's pray for um, you know, our husband's faith or some, some sort of um, variation of deep concern, deep concern that you have for your husband's um, faith. Whether it's his lack of faith, whether uh, like, meaning he doesn't believe in God, or he does but he doesn't seem to be actively pursuing God, or you know he's um, not growing in his faith, or you know whatever. That is what I've heard the most, um, and I totally get that. Like I totes hear ya, sister. Like I am the little blonde emoji hooked arms with you when it comes to that. Um, but that right there is the number one reason I started this series to begin with. And that's because I have learned so much from personal agony, <laughs> from personal experience about um, the importance of letting my husband hear me on this. Like, this is not that I don't care. This is not that I don't care. And this is not me shaming you for caring. But this is what I've learned. I cannot care more about my husband's need for a growing faith than he does. Now, I can pray for it all the day long. And I want you to. And I encourage you to. But I can't let it be this like heaviness that I'm carrying around. Um, and I'm looking for every possible person to talk to about my husband's lack of faith. Um, because what that does, and again, I'm speaking from my own experience. What that does is it begins to color the way you view him. You begin to view him as less than because he's not godly enough for you. He's not doing enough in his faith. You begin to see him as less of a leader in your home, in your life. You begin to, whether you realize it or not, you begin to um, disrespect his leadership, whether you do that blatantly or without even realizing it, because you want him to be a godlier person than he is today. Has anyone ever experienced any level of that? Jessica, I see your comment. I know that you're, you've dealt with this. Um, so I say this because I've dealt with this. So don't hear me saying don't care about your husband's spirituality. Don't hear me saying don't pray for your husband. Hear me say this is something we should pray for and then beg God to give us all the heart eyes for our husband exactly where he is and then trust God to move in your husband's life so much so that he wants to pursue God. It cannot be something he does to make you happy. Oh my word, it cannot be. Because if it does, um, Maria, I love that. Oh, I love that. If it does, if he does it just to make you happy, it's not gonna make a long-term difference. It's called behavior modification. And behavior modification is great for 10 minutes. It doesn't change the heart. So what you need to do is to beg God to reveal himself in such a way that your husband cannot but help but pursue him more. So that being said, that's our prayer for the day. So if you're in a position right now where your husband is passionately pursuing the Lord, girl, all the praise hands. You thank God for that and you ask him to make that continue to be true in your husband's life. If you're in a situation where your husband doesn't necessarily to the level you would like him to pursue and worship God in his daily life, Girl, you add that to your prayer list and you love him like crazy. You pray for him like crazy. You pursue God in your own relationship like crazy. And you love and respect your husband for where he is, for the fact that he is your husband. Therefore, is he is your leader. He is your covering. He is your spiritual head. All of those biblical words that can seem kind of heady and overwhelming, but you love him exactly where he is because that is what God has told you to do. And you may find that in doing that, you obeying the word because you love God and because you love the word may play an incredible role of, per, of bringing your, your husband to a place where he realizes, I want to honor God with my life the way that my wife does. Can I get a friggin' amen? Because that 
is what we call heart change and not behavior change. And it'll have a lasting effect in his life and therefore in your life and in your marriage as a whole. So pray, 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 pray. Thank you for the amen. And just, I, I just, like I said, I'm speaking from experience. I've been married for 10 years and I can tell you um, that in those 10 years, lots and lots and lots of them were really difficult because of some imbalance in um, the spiritual pursuit in my life versus the spiritual pursuit in my husband's life. And it's created, you know, highs and lows. And once I got to a place where I really chose to just completely trust God with the fact that my husband's relationship with God is his own and that it cannot, it cannot, um, it cannot change the way I view him, love him, serve him, follow him, respect him. But it can be an area that I continue to pray for and that I do not allow to affect my own relationship with God. So, the all the praise hand emoji is a big one when it comes to the habit of praying for your husband daily. It's actually really the basis by which this whole thing got started is because God showed me that the number one thing I can do for my husband's walk with God is to pray for him and then to treat him that he, the way I would treat him if he was where I wanted him to be. Because here's the deal, I want my husband to treat me as though I'm the way he wants me to be. But truth speaking, I'm sure, I'm sure he could fill a really, 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 I'm being nice to myself, a really long scroll with all of the things that he would like me to do better, change, work on, grow in, stop doing, start doing, right? We just, we just are that way. And so I need to treat him as though he's exactly where I want him to be in his faith and then beg God to do what he needs to do in the background and love and respect my husband in the process. And what I found is in doing that, I've grown in my own relationship with God, which is an awesome side effect, which is an awesome, you know, um, outcome, I think is a good word for that. So with that being said, that is what we'll pray for today. Um, and I hope that that maybe just kind of sheds a little bit of light too as to like why I started this whole process because I really get that that woman who's in that place like, ah, you know, my husband isn't, you know, isn't as close to God as I would want him to be. And so I kind of have to kind of have to push him, resist the temptation to push him. It's not going to do anything good. Pray for him. Love him where he is. You pursue God and trust God to work out the details. So with that being said, let's get to the praying part. All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for who you are and thank you for the fact that you want us to pursue you. You are desperate to be closer and closer and closer to us. And the truth is, is we, we need to move toward you. You haven't moved. You don't move. Your, your word says that you're the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And if we seek you, we will find you. So God, first and foremost, as we think of the praise hand emoji, let it be a reminder to us every time we see it that our relationship with you is personal, that our hands and our hearts need to be outstretched toward you in an intentional, um, purposeful way each and every day, that our relationship with you must be primary in, in our hearts and in importance, in importance and in priority. Um, for us to have any, any plausible or um, purposeful effect in any area of our lives, from our marriages to our mothering to our friendships to our work, um, it, it all has to come from seeking you first. So would you make us women who desperately want to know you and make time um, and attention to, to read your word, to obey your word, to pray, to spend time um, seeking counsel in our lives and to be intentional about um, the ways that our lives can honor you. And God, we do pray that you would make our husbands the type of men who want to do this very same thing. God, would you grab a hold of our husbands' minds, their passions, their hearts, help them to see um, that they have a desperate need for daily dependence on you, for daily walking with you, for daily consumption of your word, for godly wisdom, for godly counsel, for godly men speaking into their lives, for um, the hearing of your word, the reading of your word, community with other believers. God, would you give them a passion to do those things? And would you protect us as wives from being the kind of women who, um, who disobey the word that says in 1 Peter 3 that we're to win our husbands without a word in the things of faith. Would you remind us of that scripture so much so that we wouldn't become 
what the Proverbs describe as a nagging wife that's like a dripping roof or a dripping faucet. But instead, we would, um, we would be kind of the kind of women who love our husbands exactly where they are in their faith, so much so that they desire to have a faith that is growing. A faith that might look like ours, that would be um, that would be passionate and personal, um, and that it would be the kind of thing that would be changing our husbands' lives daily, ultimately, so that they would love you more and that their lives would be richer and fuller. But God, we recognize that that would also lead to us having closer and more um, more unified marriages, more fulfilling marriages. But ultimately, God. Uh, marriages that glorify you more and that is our desire right? it's our desire that our own lives as women as wives would glorify you that our husbands would experience that same joy of walking in close communion with you that leads to glorifying you and ultimately so that our marriages would be a picture of what it looks like to be in relationship with you God and God, I do pray for us as wives that we would, um, if any of us need a conviction in this area to love and respect and serve and cherish and, and encourage our husbands exactly, exactly where they are in their faith, God, give us that godly um, conviction that we may need. Um, God, I'm so thankful for your grace that even when we mess up in this area, as I have so many times, there is new grace for that. Um, but God, thank you for the reminder that we can trust you to be active as the Holy Spirit in our husband's lives. And we need to lay down that attempt that sometimes we fall into to try to be our husband's spiritual uh, uh, Holy Spirit, our, their spiritual reminder, their spiritual checklist. I have done all of those things, God, and I'm thankful for your grace, the fact that you move in my husband's life despite my, um, honestly, my attempts that could actually mess it up. So I'm thankful that you move even when I get in the way, but I'm, I'm thankful even more for the fact that I can trust you to do the greatest work in my husband's life, in your timing, in your way for lasting heart change and not just behavior modification. So God, would you make us women who trust you who speak the kind word, who know when to be silent when it comes to um, areas that we'd like to see our husbands grow and change when it comes to their faith, that we would be building them up with our words, with our encouragement, that we would be praying more than we would be speaking um, to-do lists or noticing um, areas where we ultimately find ourselves criticizing them even though we think we're helping. God, there's so many times that I think that I'm helping my husband, but I know that I'm actually cutting him down with my words. So protect me from doing that. And God, would you do the wooing that is necessary in my husband's heart that he would want to pursue you more, that um, every little moment that he spends in prayer with you would be um, fruitful for the growing of his relationship with you and that you would be drawing him in such a way that he wouldn't be able to resist spending quality time getting to know you more and that that would um, have a, a growing effect on our marriage ultimately again so that you would be glorified. God, thank you for the emojis, the joy they bring to our lives and the fact that we can now allow them to be daily reminders for little things we can be praying for our husbands and that those would be um, intentional reminders that we take every single day to put you first in our lives and then put our husbands second so that all of the other areas of our lives where we do want to honor you would be in the proper order. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Um, thanks so much for jumping on today and thanks for all of the emojis and interacting. It really does help me when you comment along. It makes me feel a little bit less crazy, but I am a little bit crazy. So thanks so much, guys. You know the drill. I'm going to ask you to share this video. If you know anyone who'd be interested in hanging along, Jilly, I see you, that's so fun. If you know anyone who'd be interested, hey, share this video because today I look a little bit of a hot mess, less of a hot mess, so maybe they won't think that you're sharing a video of some crazy chick that they don't wanna watch. What, maybe, maybe there'd be more wives or future wives or wannabe wives that can be being a part of this community. I love you all, have an awesome night. What day is it? I don't know what day it is, Tuesday. Have a great Tuesday night. And I'll see ya tomorrow.